we must know why is it that we practice the reasons that we have ended up to want to explore the mind to want to taste the Dhamma, to want to understand the Dhamma. Why the Dhamma? Why the Buddha's teachings? For many people, this is quite an unsettling question. Uh, even within quotation marks, you could say, unnecessary question for many, because it's it makes them feel uncomfortable. The person, not because the person is or possesses malintent, no, because it forces you into a position of urgency, into a position where you really have to get things straight for yourself. Why is it? What is compelling you to sit and meditate? What is driving you to want to practice or to practice sila, live a virtuous life? Why? What is it? This is necessary to ask of oneself. simply to make things a lot more palatable, a lot clearer for yourself, and to clear up any hindrances and obstructions that will continue to be on your path. You will continue to fight with these invisible ghosts that will pop up out of nowhere when things are going well, and you don't even know why, but you're agitated, you're angry, you're frustrated, you're sad, depressed, uncertain, unsure of where your life is going. So you pull out some of the old cards, the old memory cards, and to make sense of what's happening and and then you're not even engaged in life as it's happening you're dwelling onto the past or thinking about the future or trying to live a life that is avoiding or trying to protect yourself from any future mishaps repetitions of the uncomfortable situations of your past from occurring in the future but if you notice, there's almost like a robotic or being on the passenger side instead of on the, you know, behind the steering wheel in leading your life, in guiding your life. So you are doing things on almost automatic pilot. So one of the things that never gets to be discussed in Dhamma circles or by teachers is unless you do have somebody like Lord Buddha in the suttas, you see this because he clearly, suddenly he pulls out the person from their, you know, mirage by asking a very significant, pertinent, sharp question that brings the person to the present. And that mechanism has within it the need for the person to look at how badly they want it. Now, to answer that question, you have to ask, why? Why do I want this? That's what I began addressing this issue with. And this, 
I can narrow it down to the significance of your difficulty, your pain, your suffering, the thing that you're trying to dislodge, remove, this big stump that's standing in your way, that's not allowing you to proceed. What is it that you're always kind of evading, avoiding, not addressing? So how badly do you want it? How painful is it, this thing that you are dealing with, that you are trying to have the Dhamma come and protect you from it or provide you with answers in removing it. So how badly do you want this big stump of a tree removed from your life? Imagine if you have a terribly um, inflamed body part. Let's say you have a tooth that is completely... Well, it's full of pus, it's, it's, it's inflamed, it's got all kinds of infections. It needs to come out. Your drive, your tendency to avoid addressing it has everything to do with how intensely it is hurting. I mean, this is very logical, right? Very commonsensical. Now, what most of us do is we bring in other paraphernalia. We try to hide it. We try to have Christmas tree, you know, gift wrapping paper, you know, birthday gift type of wrapping paper to cover it up with. to minimize the intensity of the pain. We try to camouflage it, basically, with different things. And for that reason, Dhamma cannot do what it's supposed to do, what it is capable of doing. Why? Is it because the Dhamma, the teachings that we have from Lord Buddha, are inadequate or inappropriate or they do not work they work sometimes and they do not work at other times. Is that it? No. Is there a problem with the teacher per se? Well, if you have a legitimate, caring, loving, authentic teacher who's supported by their own practice, rooted in the Dhamma through and through, then that's not the problem either. They're not the problem either. Despite your, you know, made up stories to yourself to justify as to why you're not engaging, why you are falling out, why you are choosing another path. It's because the pain is not intense enough. It's as simple as that. The pain has to be intense enough to want to drag you. The pain itself, the difficulty, the suffering. Now that suffering might be physical. That suffering might be psychological, as in different states of, uh, or maybe emotional, right? Uh, depressive states, fear, anger, panic, rage, Uncertainty, all these are painful. They have, you know, they come in a spectrum. They have a gradient as to how intense they are for the person. How well does the person camouflage these? Or how far or how intense have they become in one's life where the old tools, all methods of addressing or covering up no longer work. Now, many people did come to Lord Buddha where the pus was so intense, the wound, the tooth I said, you know, to give the example of, 
was spewing, the, the pus was coming out, the wound was so inflamed. It had to be addressed immediately. For that reason, the person came in with genuine, intense desire to find a solution. And the Dhamma, the teachings, Buddhism, meditation, proper, the middle path that we talk about, the Noble Eightfold Path that we talk about, which is the essence of the Dhamma, in a sense, in many ways, one could say. They can be, well, they can be helpful. They are helpful only when the drive to want to find answers is intense enough. So they're very mutually inclusive. They, they work together. They're related. Otherwise, the Dhamma that a person might be engaging with or studying even, it will simply be superficial, intellectual. It will be simply an accessory. Why? Because it's never being used for the right reasons. Why? Because the person wants to avoid their pain. Wants to use subterfuge, wants to use some type of a numbing agent. The Dhamma is not a numbing agent. So it requires honesty from you to see why do I want to practice? It's a legitimate question. Everyone should ask. Because the world is giving you countless different resources for you to think that you have nothing to worry about. Everything is fine and you're in heaven. You're in happiness. No, no, avoid the fact that the things are impermanent. Avoid the fact that things are conditioned. Everything is breaking up. Everything is falling out from your grip like sand. And things aren't what they seem. For that reason, many people do not like uh, when Buddha teaches the importance of the uh, losing of passion, the dispassion that arises because of the disenchantment that arises in the heart of a person who looks at the world and sees how everything that arises also vanishes. Everything that is composited, compounded, conditioned, put together, made up, will be disintegrated. In, in very, it, it, it's impossible for it to stay, to be fixed to be continuously there in the form that you would like for it to be. These loved ones that you cherish, the things that you like to have in your life, piece of furniture you buy, clothing you buy, your skin, the world, the company you have. The list is long, it's endless in fact. But the mechanism behind it is the same, through and through. But what we do is we notice the thing that we love being, you know, and disintegrating in front of our eyes. Immediately we jump to something else to make up for that, to distract our attention, to give ourselves something else to chew on, to have and develop hope in maintaining that fixed, unchanging. So the wise person is a person who has come to a point where they no longer buy this, they no longer believe this anymore because the facts are too loud for them to be ignored. This becomes painful for the person. So if you notice, I didn't mention anything about 
past lives, future lives. You know, you're just talking about one's own living life experiences, where one after the other, one promise after the other, promise that is that comes from constant craving and longing, that promise that you go after pursuing and you get it and then you get it and you're like, okay, what's, how come I'm not so enthused about it, excited about it, why? It loses its luster. And life comes in sometimes and hits you hard with the loss of someone that you care about or a situation, a loss of a position, loss of a reputation, a loss of your body functioning the way it did. That also is painful. So that needs to drive a person to want to release oneself from that chain of ceaseless changes of, you know, similar sort, and, and ultimately death itself. Which, before that, there's many deaths that we're going through, almost on a daily basis. So, the wiser person is one who sees that there's something wrong here. But they don't get... Um, um, negative about it, they don't get pessimistic about it to the point where they don't, they just start to implode. No. They start to look for answers, and that's where the Dhamma comes in. But the answers are going to be provided for the person through their practice. But the practice cannot be maintained if the person is not bringing to the table the intensity of their genuineness, the intensity of their urgency, meaning, I see them synonymous, in fact, but the truth as to why, that's why I was mentioning, how deeply is your suffering being felt by you? How significant is it? Only then will the Dhamma really work for you in, in, in amazing ways. Otherwise, you'll simply be, it's very superficial. But it's a lot deeper than that because it does provide freedom from suffering. But you have to really appreciate suffering to understand your suffering. Not to celebrate the suffering, no, but to really see how deeply the suffering is a, a presence in your life. One has to acknowledge that. That's what I mean by appreciating. Only then you can know that, no, 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 no. no. I have to take care of this. I have to address this not run away from it. Because I see that a lot. Many people are running away from pain and suffering. And they even use the Dhamma, the teachings of Lord Buddha, as some form of type of, a, um, as I said, numbing agent. It is not. It's not anti-inflammatory medication, you know? It heals. It's an antidote. It completely heals you. But you have to let the doctor do his magic. The doctor is Lord Buddha, and the teachings are the medicine. But you have to apply it the right way. You have to apply it on the actual infected area. So when we say suffering, what is it that I'm suffering from? That is a legitimate question also. Why am I practicing to feel good? That's a lame excuse, I would say. 
That's a lame reason. That's a weak, spineless reason. Because that changes. And that's why many people come, many people leave the Dhamma. Because they're always looking around, like, you know, if you've ever seen chicken, you know, chickens in a, in a coop, they get their heads up, you know, from the, when they're pecking away, and they like, look around, and they're like, oh, there's something, there's something, there's something. Your attention is always being grabbed by something. That is not what a practitioner does in this tradition. So how deep is your suffering? How much are you acknowledging it? How important is it for you to get rid of the suffering? How honest are you about the suffering that you are experiencing? What is your suffering? You, you can always start from there. So once you have, because you're identifying your enemy in a sense, the main pain, painful area, you need to know what it is. Otherwise, it's just symptomatic. You're not addressing the main cause of the suffering. Where is it? If your knee is in pain, if there's a big wound on your knee, it's an exposed wound, in fact, and you go ahead and you try to address it with the toes that are not even scratched, you try to work on those and leave that wounded, bleeding area of the knee untouched. And you go massaging the toes or the head or the back of your shoulders. Really, that's stupid. And that's what many people are doing. That's why they do not even come close to treating the pain, let alone healing fully. So just a few questions I'm leaving. And it's basically the same question I'm leaving you with. Spend some time. 